I need to know. Need to know today. Sister Becky needs your RSVPs. No Wednesday night service for the ladies. Okay, no Wednesday night service for the teens. There won't be any Wednesday night service for the Thanksgiving. Right, okay, so all Wednesdays are canceled. Wednesdays, Wednesdays uh, meetings. Now, if, if, if you wanted to go to a, what's called a, I guess a pre Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving Eve service, they are having one at. Plum. Yeah. Uh, there's four yeah. churches involved, East Mahoney Baptist, uh, Plum, uh, and the two brethren churches. Uh, they get together for what they call a Thanksgiving Eve service. I never heard of Thanksgiving Eve service, but like Christmas Eve service for Thanksgiving, I guess. Uh, it's like at 7 or 7.30. It's in the morning, I think. Ladies' luncheon is the second Monday of December. If you're planning to come, please let me know. And I just wanted to share um, a note of thanks for everyone that came out Wednesday night for packing shoe boxes. And um, we were planning to pack 100.
120, and we ended up packing 136. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. praise God over the provision there, and um, we're so grateful for the support, and we look forward to seeing where they end up. Amen. The Power Project is supporting that. I'd like to thank God for the uh, Facts Bible for School program. We finished up for this section, start again in January. We had 18 kids, and they were just wonderful. Amen. Great. Okay, don't forget, evening service, 6.30 evening, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Kendall, 6.30 this evening. Any other announcements? Um, no. We have a song we're going to be singing today. It's called, In Thanksgiving Let Us Praise Him. And uh, it goes, actually know the tune, the words are Thanksgiving words, but it's to the tune of we are called God's, to be God's people. So I conclude that first, there is nothing better for a man than to be happy and to enjoy himself as long as he can, and second, that he should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of his labors, for these are gifts from God. From the first I I have morning to the last for glow of us. Every breath we take is sacred, for it is our gift to us. In thanksgiving, let us praise Him. In thanksgiving, let us sing songs of praise and Said to his wife um, on their honeymoon, 
he said, I said to Daryl, he said, uh, I want to say this one time. I won't have to say it again. He said, I love you. And he said, so I, I don't have to say it again. I said it one time. So uh, sometimes with God, we'll talk about like that. And uh, so he wants to hear our thanksgiving. Uh, and it changes our hearts when we, when we give God thanks. Uh, any, any prayer requests or praise reports you have this morning? I remember Sandy, um, Morgan passed away on Thursday. And um, she's having a pretty rough time. And she also has, also has a bad cold this time. So that's okay. Remember Sandy. <coughs> prayers. Um, any others? Remember the Fairman family? Some yeah. of you will know the Shirley Powell's sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that passed away. Yeah, Marty? Um, I'd like to give God praise um, for Michelle's benefit last week. It went really well. Good. I'd like to thank all of you who participated either in donating, uh, coming out to it, praying for it. Uh, it just went really well, and we're all really thankful. We praise God and thank you all for it. Amen. Anyone else? I'm thankful my daughter came from Texas because a lot of people suggested I not drive there this year. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of said something about, well, would you come visit and fly because I'm not into flying anymore. And yeah. so I'm blessed with her visit this Amen. week. Amen. And this is the daughter I had asked prayers for that was going through a lot of health issues last year with a doctor trying to just give her uh, her um, um, appendix surgery, and he did one that explored every possibility he could do surgery on her, so he prolonged it, that she really was really getting bad. She couldn't even hardly walk or get around, and uh, so, I mean, she's come back a lot, and, she's, and the doctors have blessed her with knowledge of getting her moving again, and et cetera, because she has uh, really... Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and so uh, even her standing and walking is a miracle. So thank you for the prayers. Amen. Amen. I'm asking prayer for my brother and my sister-in-law. Okay. Anybody's brother and sister-in-law? Um, member Juanita and member Sandy Mountain. Uh, we pray for Calvin as he prays for waiting. Yeah, member Calvin as he's praying. Plan the waiting on the dialysis, what they're going to have to do, when they want to do it, and all those things. But uh, any other? I have a cousin, uh, Sandra Ackerman, in that back home in Latrobe Hospital with a number of uh, health complications. Okay, let's remember her. Yes, Patty. Uh, I'd like to um, thank Mr. Reed and thank uh, thank his wife. Yes, I have a card. <coughs> I was supposed to read, but I forgot to. It's from Janet, Greg, and family. So words cannot express our appreciation for all that you did for us. The thoughts, the prayers, the beautiful throw, also your support. May God bless you all, Janet and Greg, to the family and friends of Dixonville Wesleyan Church. Uh, but you remember them, uh, the Dwayne's family, and Janet, as well as your prayers for Nurse Patty. Uh, yes. Yes, remember, I saw Betty Lou, I've called her Betty Lou so long. I found out today it's not her real name. <coughs> I'm going to call her, so it's Betty Lou. Uh, but she, she was in the hospital and then she got moved to a nursing home. Uh, so please, please pray for her. in that situation at home that they're in. Um, they need relief from that. Any unspoken request you have you want to lift before the Lord this morning? Sandy, as you wait, as we prepare our hearts for prayer this morning. As always, our altars are open for our special needs and there's concerns on our hearts.
and Hazel's family that lost a brother this week, uh, kind of tragically, and went hunting and never returned. And uh, so remember, remember that family and as they're going through this grief as well. Gracious Father, we thank you that you are, that you're not just there during the good times, but you're also there during the rough times. We thank you for your blessings you give us each day, Lord. We thank you for the comfort in times of grief. We thank you for help, Lord, when we're helpless. Thank you for hope, Lord, when our outlook seems hopeless. Father, help us to learn to look to you for everything. And Father, most of all, may we be grateful. Give us hearts full of gratitude. Give us hearts that express our thanksgiving to you. Not just during this time, Lord, but, but always. May we be grateful believers in you above all else. Lord, may our hearts not be complaining and, and bitter and, and um, grumbling. But Father, let our hearts be lifted to you and find the things that to be thankful for at this time. We know that so many are going through so dip, much difficulty and it seems like sorrow and pain seems to overwhelm us. But Lord, in the midst of all the darkness, Lord, let us look up to see the light of the things that you've brought to us, Lord. And through thanksgiving, Lord, lead us out of this darkness. Lead us out of this difficulty. Lead us out, lead us out of these problems that, that we can't seem to see answers to. We know that you're the one who can do the impossible. Regardless how you answer, we know that you have to take care of us anyway. Amen. Lord, we don't always get what we want. We don't always get what we desire. But we know that regardless, you are still our God. You will still bring us through. Father, we thank you that you are infinite in your wisdom. Knowing how to solve any problem we have. You are way bigger than all the difficulties we face. Father, we pray for each one that's going through a very difficult time. Lord, those who are suffering grief those who need special grace during this time to comfort their hearts. Comfort them, we pray this morning. Help those who are discouraged and, and down, lift them up. Father, for these families with loss, we pray that you would lift them up as well. We pray for Calvin, Lord, as he's facing surgery, Lord. We pray for Pearlene as she's coming out of surgery and suffering pain, that you need your, your help with that. Father, let your grace and your blessing be upon us today as your people. Give us your protection. Wrap your arms of love around your people today, we pray. Let us lean on one another. Let us encourage one another. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> we have a video song. And uh, some other song for you. You can come along and sing along or whistle along. And sit back and enjoy it. Sort of prepare our hearts for the, the pastor's message. And uh, it's about thanking the Lord. And if you haven't, Made your, your progress to the front to do a thank you note yet. Here's a good chance to do it during this song. So just uh, enjoy the song as you prepare this for the message.
again, you're welcome to come forward during this video and uh, sign up with your thank you. favorite part of Thanksgiving is? Let me show you. This is Uncle Jerome, but we just call him Butters because he puts butter on everything. Regina, it tastes like the Great Depression. <laughs> this is Monique Lorraine, and oh, I don't know her. Uh, Lorraine, who's your friend? Mm -hmm. Happy Thanksgiving, Lorraine. Meet Uncle. You know that family member that always says inappropriate things? Yeah, this is ours. Hey, Benny, what's the difference between a doctor, a lawyer, and a toy? Ben, we're moving quickly. Ha ha, I haven't had dire with me this delicious since I dined with the Wizards of Pandoria a fortnight ago. This is my nephew, Derek. He still lives at home, and he's into role playing. Pantheon! Hey, but think of this most delicious stuff, smoked meat. Definitely not my favorite part. This is my cousin Rachel. Hey, you remember, pumpkin pie's the best. You're the best. <laughs> hey, grease those wheels up. We're gonna race Annie Joan down the hill after dessert. Who took my pumpkin pie? It was right here. You savages! part of Thanksgiving. Taking out the trash. I know what you're thinking. My family's kind of a mess, and we are. But that's not why this is my favorite part of Thanksgiving. You see, breaking away for just a moment, it gives me the opportunity to remember how much God has blessed me. And to realize that, generally, he uses messy people to do it. For instance, Lorraine always invites people over who need a little encouragement. She is the hands and feet of Jesus, even if those hands are texting most of the time. Derek is different, but he's also the first one to help anytime someone needs a hand. Unc, he's not even really family. He's just a close friend. And he makes me feel better about myself. <laughs> Regina and Jerome may be high maintenance, but when the recession hit, they paid my mortgage for a few months. When we're all packed in the house together, I tend to forget the, the good stuff. So, taking out the trash just gives me a moment out here. I remember how much God loves us, how much He's blessed us, no matter how big a mess we are. It doesn't take much, just a moment or two. It's all it takes to think. Who are you talking to, Benny? You see this, Benny? Do you see this? Somebody threw away a perfectly good piece of pumpkin pie in the trash! Hooligans. They're all hooligans, I tell you. Back in my day, we didn't have pumpkin pie, we had squash. We had to crunch those up and put paprika and cinnamon on it. Nasty, but we ate it. This is pumpkin pie, it's the real deal. Come throw away. Keep it. Eat it. Save it. Breathe it. That may resemble some of your families. Maybe not. Um, being thankful. Being thankful is what we want to look at this morning um, and the ways that God helps us to become thankful. Um, I started looking through Colossians and um, for some reason the other week, maybe it's this week or last week, I felt like just reading the whole book of Colossians. I don't normally read like that. 
but I just want to read the whole book. And so I did, and, and then out of there come all the times that he says to be thankful. And while he says it about six or seven times, remember where Paul is at when he says this. He says, remember my chains. At the end, Paul was in chains in a jail. And out of those out of the situation, he says, be thankful. And we often think it's it's only when things are going great and everything is right and God has answered all my prayers and there's no unanswered prayer, then I'll be thankful. That time probably will never come. And so Paul begins here in, in the uh, chapter 1, verse 3. And he says, we always pray for you and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then on down in that, that first, first chapter, he says, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance, put that back in your memory, the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. In chapter 2, he says, let your roots grow down into him and be uh, and let your lives be built up on him, then your faith will grow strong in the truth as you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Overflow with thankfulness. Then in chapter 3, in 15, 16, and 17, he says, And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body you are called to live in peace, and always... Be thankful. Verse 16, he says, Let the message about Christ and all of its richness fill your life. Teach and counsel each other with the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Verse 17, he says, And whatever you do or say as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father, and then he says, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Heavenly Father, help us to have a thankful heart. Let it overflow. We may spill onto others, we pray. Father, teach us how to do that today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, the Apostle Paul was not in his... Uh, most fun time when he had this uh, writing of thanksgiving and it's we have to get ourselves somehow past the part that we only are thankful when everything is well uh, and find what is good in things that perhaps aren't so easy I read of two teachers who had went to school together and had lost track of each other and they finally come back together and and uh, they haven't seen each other for a long time, so they begin to fill each other in on what happened in their lives uh, since they met each other. And the one teacher says, I got married two years ago. And her friend says, oh, that's good. Well, not really, the first one said. My husband's twice as old as I am. Oh, that's bad, the friend said. Oh, no, not really. He's a millionaire several times over. Oh, that's good, said her friend. Well, not really. She said, he's mean and he won't give me any money. Oh, that's bad. Well, not really. He's built me a half million dollar house. Oh, that's good. Well, not really. It burned down last month. Oh, that's bad. Well, no, not really. He was in it when it burned down. <laughs> so you can always find something to be thankful for. Uh, sometimes you have to look a little harder than others. But there is things to be thankful for. And uh, Paul thanks, first of all, in that very first verse, He's thankful for others. He said, we give thanks for you. We thank God for you. We thank you what's, what you are doing um, and what's going on in your life. We praise, we always pray for you and we thank our God. And then he gives the reasons why he thanks him. He said in verse 4, for we have heard of your faith and your love for all God's people, which comes from the confident hope that we have in him. Do you ever thank God for others? Do you thank God for the people in your lives that, that bring you hope and healing? 
We ought to thank God for other people in our life, as Paul did here. Again, he is the one who brought them the gospel, and he is thanking God for them. He's thanking them for the converts. He's thanking them for this church who's in Colossians. Um, and he, he's thanking them because they are a part of his life. Um, and he says there we have the, the reason we are to give God thanks. Number two in verse five, he said, always thanking God. And then he says, for he has enabled you to share an inheritance that belong to the people that live in the light. The inheritance. In fact, he says there that is reserved for you in heaven. In the uh, New Living Translation, verse five, we are always confident of your confident hope, which God has reserved for you in heaven. Did you hear what he says? We can be thankful for. We have a reservation. We have a reservation. Do you know what it's like not to have a reservation? I went. To Gatlinburg with our teens back when I was a young pastor, and we did all of our things, filled out all of our papers, had all of our rooms booked and paid for. And so we got on that long journey down to Gatlinburg from Kentucky. It was probably eight or ten hours, I can't remember, it was a long, long trip. We get there late in the day, fight through traffic, and finally get to the motel. And we begin to book in, look, or get our reservations in. We, we, and so I got the three girls I took down there. They got their rooms, and I said, okay, now, what about my room? We don't have anything for you. <laughs> okay, we paid for it. We, we set it up. You should have a reservation. No, we don't have any reservation for you. So after traveling all that, all that way, thinking that you had a reservation, not having one is not, not really that fun. They said, oh, we'll figure it out here. We'll just, just hang, hang loose here, and we'll, we'll find some place. And so you're waiting, hoping that they find some place because you don't have a reservation. But Paul said you can be thankful to God because when you get to heaven, you won't be waiting when God says, oh, I, I can't find your reservation. If you know him, he said, there is reserved in heaven, there is a reservation for you that's already there. And that should give us something to thank God for. In heaven, our reservation is there. He said, is reserved in heaven for you. That ought to make us thankful. That God knows and he has a place there that's just for us. And then he says in verse 7 that we ought to overflow with thankfulness. We ought to overflow. Do you know what overflow means? What do you think about when the first thing you hear is overflow? Pot boiling, yes, it overflows. <laughs> you what? Toilet. Toilet, yes, that's very. Now that's not a good overflow. <laughs> I, I turned the water on in the sink or do dishes, and then I went to do something else, and you come back and realize, whoops, that's too much water, and it overflows. Um, so overflowing is when you've got too much of something, or so much of something that it, it just flows out. Yeah. Naturally, it comes out. And Paul says that we ought to be overflowing with thanksgiving. We ought to be overflowing so much thanksgiving that we overflow. And again, remember, he's sitting in jail while he says this. He's, he can't go where he wants to go. He can't eat what he wants to eat. He can't even preach where he wants to preach. He is in jail, but he says, overflow with thanksgiving. Overflow. And then he says, we can give thanks always. In fact, in one place in Thessalonians, Paul says, in everything, give thanks. He didn't say for everything, but in everything. As I thought about that, I thought about <clears throat> several things. When dad passed away, that was the one thing that I feared and dreaded the most is when I knew he was, had cancer and it wouldn't be long before he was going to pass and, and yet in spite of the worst thing I guess that had ever happened in my life was losing my father I could still be thankful I was thankful to God that I had 85 years with him well I don't know 85 I wasn't 85 but you know what I'm saying he was 85 so I had all that time with him 
Uh, I thank God that he lived to be 85. And I really did because at about 68 or 9, he had a heart attack that could have taken him out, but God spared him in spite of his male stupidity. He had said, I'm having chest pains at one of the hospital. I said, oh, how long have you had them? About a month. I haven't told your mom until tonight. Wonderful. And so God still spared him. So God gave him, I, I saw his extra time. And even when he had cancer and we prayed and it went away for three months, there was no sign of cancer and then it ended up coming back. And again, I had to thank God in spite of the fact that the cancer was back that I got three more months that I wouldn't have had with him. And I began to thank God for every day that he gave me. Um, knowing that it would soon end, but I thank him for the days that I had. Um, I thank God for his example of faith that he had. And so in the midst of difficult or hard things, we can still be thankful, not necessarily for the thing, but for the things around it that God has helped us with. Matthew Henry is one of my favorite um, preachers, writers, in the way that he, that he gave thanks when he was robbed. He was robbed, and he gave thanks. And here's what he said, God, I'm, I'm thankful that I've never been robbed before. He's robbed the first time. You can be complaining, or you can say, I'm glad this is the first time it ever happened. He said, I'm, I'm thankful that they took all that I had, but it wasn't much. I'm thankful that they took my money or my wallet, but not my life. And so again, he's thankful. And he said, and this is, this is the one that really gets you. He said, I'm glad that I was robbed, and I was not the one doing the robbing. See, you can be thankful in everything. You can always be thankful, not necessarily for the difficult things you're going through, but we can use thanksgiving to get through those things that are difficult. That's what Paul was doing as he was in prison. He said, thank God always. Always be thankful. Always be thankful. Overflow with thanksgiving. Are you overflowing with thanksgiving? I've seen overflowing when my sister's ice maker failed. And she has two floors and it came all out of the refrigerator, all through the floor, all down on the pool table in the basement, water everywhere. Why? Because it overflowed. God wants us to overflow so that our thanksgiving will spill out on other people. Are we spilling out or is it other things? Our question is often, God, what have you done for me lately? Oh yes, you did this, but what have you done lately? Like the little boy with the orange who, a man gave him an orange and his mom said, what do you say? The little boy thought for a minute, and he handed the orange back, he says, peel it. <laughs> and that's us, what have you done lately for me? But Paul says, be thankful. In fact, in, in verse 16, he says, even with thankful hearts, sing. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankful hearts. Think, sing from a thankful heart. He didn't say it has to sound good, he just said it has to be from a thankful heart. Thankful for what God has done. Remembering the things that he's done. We want to remember this morning the sacrifice that he paid that we might have eternal life. And he said, my body and my blood, we are to have a thanksgiving and to remind ourselves what he's done. And to sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankful hearts. You know, sometimes we can just sing songs and go through the motions. But he says... It's more important that we sing from thankful hearts. And you know, the, the danger is the longer you are a Christian and the longer you've been in church and the more songs you know by heart that you can sing by heart, the easier it is to sing just from memory without a thankful heart. It's easiest to slip into automatic. It's easy just to slip into overdrive, if you will, spiritually, and 
just not really have your heart in it, but you're still singing. He says in verse 17, give thanks through Jesus to our Father. Let Jesus be the way we give thanks, and we give thanks for what he's done, that he has brought us into the family of God, that he's forgiven our sins, that, that he has made us part of his own, that he has reserved a place in heaven for us, giving thanks to God through Jesus. And we want to do that. But then he says the last thing there in chapter 4, verse 2. He says, devote yourselves. Devote yourselves. Be devoted. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. And a thankful heart. A thankful heart. That's what he's asking us to have is a thankful heart. Devoting ourselves to thanksgiving. And to be thankful, we have to find something to be thankful for. We have to... Do what we can to remember the good things, the things that make us thankful. A, a, a poem that they used to read, or they read with the cathedrals, and it says, Today upon a bus I saw a lovely maid with golden hair. I envied her. She's so beautiful. And how I wished I were so fair. When suddenly she arose to leave, I saw her hobble down the aisle. She had one foot and wore a crutch, but as she passed, she wore a smile. And he said, Oh God, forgive me when I whine. I have two feet, and the world is mine. And when I stopped to buy some sweets, the, lady, the lad who served me had such charm. He seemed to radiate good cheer. His manners were so kind and warm. And I said, It's nice to deal with someone with such courtesy I seldom find. And he turned and said, Oh, thank you, sir. And I saw he was blind. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. I have two eyes and the world is mine. Then walking down the street, I saw a child with eyes of blue. He stood and watched the others play. It seemed he knew what, not what to do. I stopped for a moment and said, why don't you join the others, dear? He looked ahead without a word and I realized he could not hear. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. I have two ears and the world is mine. With feet to take me where I go, and eyes to see the sunsets glow, with ears to hear what I would know, I am blessed indeed, the world is mine. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. One said, I complained that I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. Thanksgiving is a choice. It's a choice. Every day we have to decide whether we're going to be thankful or be grumbling and complaining. We're going to fall into one camp. Automatically fall into the grumbling and complaining. It's, it's by choice we have to step out of that and say, I'm going to choose to be thankful instead. As we come before the Lord's table this morning, in this time of thanksgiving, I'll ask Esther if she'll come to the piano and, and play on the piano. And Jesus offered his body and blood. He says on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the blood, or took the bread and the cup, and he blessed it. And he said, this cup is a symbol of my blood, which is going to be given for you. And this bread symbolizes my body that is going to be broken for you. And as often as you do it, remember what I have done until I come again. So we look back to the fact that he paid the price for us. And like we can choose whether to be thankful or to be grumbling, we choose whether to follow Jesus and go to heaven or choose to to take our own path. And so I beg you this morning, choose his path. Choose the path that Jesus laid out for you, the price that he paid with his own life. He wants to forgive your sins. He's paid, paid the price already. He's already done everything. It's Now it's your choice. He's done all that he can. And he says, please come to the table. It says, if you're walking in fellowship with your brother and sister, if you're walking in the light as he's in the light, as you're obeying him,